Grand, you look like you're doing pretty good. You got a nice breeze going there down by the ocean and <laughs> nice sunny, warm place. It's, not, it's a little cooler here, I think. <laughs> it's a gorgeous and darker. Day. Yeah. It's a, a little overcast this morning. We had some rain, um, but the sun's coming out this afternoon. So we're going to have a lot of fun here uh, with my uh, girls, the family that, that are visiting. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you can't go wrong when you got family around. Yeah. So how are you doing, Rob? This is day, where are we at now? Day three, Wednesday. Day three, yeah. Lots going on. Halfway through. Halfway through. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Well, and oh. today you're going to be talking about... Uh, the narrowed feeding window, I guess, right? Mainly. Right. And yep. of course, our five points of the day and what we decided to do and that kind of stuff. Exactly. So, exciting stuff. Well, everyone's always anxious to uh, hear about your five tips of the day. And then we'll talk a little bit about, well, narrowed feeding window. And I'll, I'll answer some questions too about uh, health and food, I guess. Uh, well, I was, I was going through the list last night, actually thinking about today and uh, on the very first one of the list, on the challenge list, there's a was a line there. It said, "Listen with your heart." So I, I was trying to think all day what that meant. So I decided to just listen and see how I felt about what people said, and that, that's sort of my plan for today: is to just listen and and see how I feel about what people are saying to me. And it was just a different idea; it made me think differently. So listening more than just responding, is that kind of what you mean? Yeah, listening and, and seeing what people's words meant to me. Did they mean something to me or what action? How did I feel when I, when I was listening to their conversation? Was I paying attention? You know, what, what did it have meaning in my own thoughts, in my own heart, in my own mind, that kind of stuff. So pay more attention from, from how I feel about a conversation as opposed to just listening to words. That's got a lot of meaning and depth, you know, and that's, so important that ability to kind of interpret what we hear, not just listen for the sake of listening. Yeah, and getting through because I have a tendency to uh, jump past the gun and start answering things. And <laughs> my daughter tells me all the time that uh, you can't answer the the question before I've given it to you, Dad. But uh, I have a tendency to do that and jump ahead. So learning to slow down and listen a little bit, not not always thinking you know where somebody's going with a a conversation or a direction. So sometimes I, I have a tendency to do that and I got to correct myself on it to be a better person. Well, it's good that you have that insight, Rob. You know, I think so many of us would probably echo that same, those same words. You know, they say that for patients, um, that for physicians often, I think it's 30 seconds, if that, that people will speak um, before the physician starts to interrupt them. And I, you know, I know for me through the years, I've learn that one of the greatest things I can do is kind of slow down and, and listen. And in a conversation, it's sometimes funny when you can sit back and watch the people that are rushing through a conversation. And if you can kind of sit in the corner of a room and be that active, that active listener, and it's almost like we get to be a bird's eye view of the situation, right? We kind of have a little bit of an oversight rather than always getting drawn into all the conversations as well. That's true. And you can't make a difference if you don't actually know what the person's feeling about what they're telling you. Mm -hmm. So that's really something to pay attention to. And then on the second one <laughs> was, uh, well, I actually, I was taking to heart your words yesterday, the choose, chill, uh, cherish, and check. And I, I thought about how you talked about uh, slowing down at a table. And I, so I actually had dinner with my grandson and we sat down and, and had a little conversation about what he was doing in school and what we were eating and why we eat if it's good for us and, and and it was a nice way to just sort of slow down and take a minute and use that time while eating to uh concentrate on on improving other parts of my life as well that's good you're really putting the choose to chill cherish and check to the test yeah <laughs> well, gotta see this is about uh changing your lifestyle right so i i think it's really what we're about we might be losing five pounds but we're we're going to be losing a lot of poundage too on on things that uh cause trouble in our life right so true it's the heaviness that weighs it down that you know that extra emotional baggage or mental baggage that we carry and you know what i've seen is often when that baggage is gone then that external five pounds comes off just simply on its own mm -hmm. i think so too yeah. and then uh the next one was 
organic. So I had to go through and look through my cupboards and see, do I have organic food or am I still eating out of a box or a can? And what do I actually eat? And then actually I'm at the point where I'm pretty organic now. It's mostly lettuce and tomatoes and natural stuff. I don't really have canned goods or other than processed bread, which I don't eat very much of, but it's about the only processed thing I have at this point. So I have pretty much eliminated everything. That's the last thing to go. And that's a great one. And, you know, so many people ask that they say, do I really need organic, you know, and um, I'll post a little bit later today, but have you ever heard Rob of the, the food list of the, um, the top 10 uh, fruits and vegetables that do have pesticides in them? No. So no. there's a, it's put out by the um, food Alliance network. So basically when we want to choose organic, there are cer certain foods like strawberries, peaches, you know, tomatoes, apples, they have the highest level of pesticides. So those are the ones that are basically better to spend your money, like that extra 50 cents or a dollar to buy organic. Where That's a good list to post up. I didn't know that. That's yeah. actually quite interesting. Yeah. And then where the things with a thicker skin, you know, generally like an avocado, an orange, you know, bananas, generally they have a lower level of pesticide just because they have a thicker skin residue on them. Wow. No, I didn't know that. See, I learned something new on this channel every day. It's amazing. I like it. There we go. Uh, number four, sleep in darkness. I have that now. It's just total darkness. Make sure. I mind you, I bang into things in the morning now, but <laughs> other than that, it's not so bad. Getting up in the morning is a little bit of a pain, but uh, I, I guess it's, it's a go good way of learning how to feel my way around. <laughs> Well, I guess it gives us a greater, greater appreciation of our sight, right? That's you true, because that. uh, I, I have bad eyes, so I take stuff from my eyes every day, and, and I, I know how precious they are. <laughs> you got to take care of your eyesight for sure, so it's good. And so becoming aware of that sense of sight, you know, there, I think there's a dinner they do once a year. I think it's for, um, you know, a fundraiser for uh, the Society for the Blind, and they have it in the dark, and they get people to wear blindfolds. I don't know if you've ever heard of that before. No, but it's a great idea. <laughs> Just get a little insight into something. Anytime you can sort of feel how things are, it's much better than hearing it. Feeling it is, is a much better experience. And just that gratitude for vision, you know, that we often can take for granted until something happens that uh, our vision's not there. So, okay. Feel your way and, through the darkness. Yeah, and the last one, I, I, as when I was a young man, I did karate and kojukai and stuff, and we used to do what a thing called forms. So we, forms are pretty complicated. You would practice all these strict moves and rolls and strikes and things like that. Now I'm a little getting a little old for that stuff, mind you. But uh, tai chi is a good form of exercise that brings it down to a level that you can impact your body and and do it in a nice way. So I, I started tai chi again for the first time in years just some of the smaller movements to do in the morning other than dancing. Cause you know, dance moves may, <laughs> might run out of all those dance moves, but the Tai Chi is something I can do uh, every morning. If there's a particular thing I'm working on, I can use certain moves that will help, you know, guide, guide those muscles of those joints to make sure they're getting movement for the day. If I'm going to be using them in a certain way. So. Wow. I didn't know you were Tai Chi. You probably don't know that I practice Qigong, which is, basically the forms that make up Tai Chi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, there's been a lot of, you know, beyond the, how we feel with these movements, there has been a lot of research, uh, in particular, actually for osteoporosis. Uh, Harvard did a review on it, and Harvard has also written a book on Tai Chi for health. And because- Excellent. I actually have it. Oh, you do? <laughs> it's a good book. Yes. <laughs> it's a good book. Yes, similar mindset, it seems that we have. Yes, yeah. So what, what is one of the moves that you know from Tai Chi that you like? So I one of the moves I really love is just the shaking movement. So basically just opening everything up, starting by shaking out your wrists, shaking out your arms, and then literally just bouncing up and down in your heels. And that simple movement just activates the body. So when people feel that they're stagnant, if they've been sitting for a long time, um, I'm not sure if that move has a name, but it's it's done in many of the practices just to start to activate the body a little bit. So I love that one. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And what about you? What what move do you like? What move do I like? I like the, more of the uh, moves like, I don't know if you know, the crossbow. Yes. 
how to use the bow. I like mm -hmm. the fact that they, when you, when you put the forms together and you put your hands together, so you're, you have to concentrate on everything that's happening. And then as you're moving, your eyesight follows your hand to an open palm and bringing it back. So all the different forms like that, where you, you have to pay attention. And then each day you get it smoother and strengthen it. And you pay attention to what's happening with your shoulder, with your arm, your hands, each piece has a, a certain thing you feel in your body. So those are the kinds of forms I like, things like that, that uh, how, how can I get them more perfect each day? So There's a beautiful sequence I love. Um, like I, I love that one, the, the, like you said, when you're pulling back on the bow and mm -hmm. there's another one, it's got, it's a multi-phase form, but I love it because it's one of the motions is kind of lifting up the earth and it involves kind of doing a squat and focusing on your heart and opening your heart and your core. Taking and, the energy uh, from the earth and bringing it up and letting it go forward. Yeah. See, there's all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Tai Chi is amazing. It's got, uh, it's a great way to make you think well, like at the same time, getting a little exercise that strengthens your body and it's low stress and can be done yeah. by anyone at any age yeah um, even as you get older old guys like me can even do it <laughs> <laughs> see i'll post it for our viewers there's one of the teachers i've had through the years he's online but his name's lee holden and he's got some great little workouts on youtube so if people want to try that out um i'll just post that for them too that's awesome wow we got lots of information today rob yeah it's good stuff people and we didn't get quite to the main topic yet i guess <laughs> well, that's that's up to you, Doc. Yeah. <laughs> I just um, gave you what I'm doing now. Now you're going to tell us how to number three, narrowed feeding window. So the, the main point of this whole thing. So if people saw kind of the little meme that came out today with the narrowed feeding window, this really touches on a lot of different things. Um, so in this window, what we know when we eat in a shortened period of time then we allow our body to do what it's meant to do naturally. Okay. So when we go and when we eat in eight hours and don't eat for 16, then the body starts its regular processes. So one of these processes you'll see in the meme is detoxification. So our body needs to clean itself up, you know, and often we're taught that you have to eat on a really regular basis to, you know, to stabilize blood sugar and everything like that, you know, that it's false. Most people do, most people do not need to always be eating on a regular period of time. Um, because when we stop eating, the body goes into a process called autophagy. I don't know if you've ever, I know you like your literature, but uh, autophagy, so autophagy. Not, not, that's not my books. <laughs> Different books we read, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> so autophagy means auto eating. So it's a really cool word. And the doctor that termed it got the Nobel Peace Prize for it. So what it means is self-eating. So when you think about it, you know, our body needs to clean itself up. We kind of think about our, our digestion and we think about, yeah, we have to eliminate our bowels, right? We have to pee out whatever. But the body is doing this on a cellular level without us doing anything at all. So when we give it more time that it's not getting distracted, when we're not too busy thinking, when we're not too busy running around, when we get our rest and relaxation, and also when we don't eat, the body can do this process of autophagy much better. And this is how we can clean up, you know, if we, and when we look at autophagy and we look at lifespan, we know that when uh, people have been looked at through the years, like the, the centenarians, the people that have lived to be over hundred, most of these people do not eat super large amounts of food. And, you know, most of them aren't eating all day long because when we do this, when we allow our body to self eat and self digest, it helps our lifespan. And many of us, that's what we want as well. I guess we look at lifespan and we look at health span. So, you know, lifespan is the number of years in our life, but health is the number of our vitality that we have, right? Health is how well we feel from a day-to-day -day basis. And so that's another benefit of this narrowed feeding window. Uh, we do talk a little bit about, of course, weight loss that can come. So many people have probably heard of Jason Fung. Are you aware of him, Rob, the intermittent fasting doctor from Toronto? Yeah, my brother. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he's stuck on him. It's not working for him, though, <laughs> but he's stuck on him. Well, you know, Dr. Fung, you know, is a, a nephrologist. He's a kidney specialist. And he asked himself, well, why, what can I do? I'm like putting people on dialysis. What can really help them in the long run? And he started looking at the science and the literature. And so going to these periods of narrowed feeding windows is what 
you know, he's popularized, you know, with his books and, and this sort of thing. Uh, but we do know that it does work for weight loss. So if it's not working for your brother, then we have to think. Because he's probably cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a possibility, right? Um, the others are just like everything else we talked about this week. You know, I'd say, ask your brother, how is your sleep? How is your stress? Uh, how is his movement? Because also those things will impact um, how your body's feeling and your weight as well, even if you're still eating within that eight hour window. Uh, so the other what about, uh, oh, I, I guess not in this topic, we'll talk about this another day, but stress eating. People eat a lot with stress, I notice. Right. So I, I noticed my, just thinking of my brother again. So when, when he's got things going on in his life, he has a tendency to eat to feel good. We, we eat to make ourselves feel good. So is there a certain thing you should be doing to make sure that's not why you're eating? So one of my mentors says that when we're craving some sweet food, it's because we're craving sweetness in our life. I believe that. Yeah. So if you think that you're craving sweets and sugar, so how can you make your life sweeter? How can you add some joy to your life? Um, and that's where all the emotions, you know, come from, you know, because most uh, emotional eating people, they eat mindlessly. They eat because they're just starting. They want to fill something inside, you know, and people have told me men and women have said, it doesn't matter how many brownies I eat. If I get to that bag of chips, I just want the end. And, you know, when I get there, I don't feel satisfied. There's no satisfaction in that because they weren't eating to nourish their body. They were eating to heal some type of emotional wound that they had. Right. True. So pay attention to your eating. Pay exactly. Attention. So paying attention and then going back to every, all the principles we're learning, especially number one, like that day of loving awareness, you know, when in doubt, love is the answer. Uh, but learning about self-love and starting to recognize, oh, this is emotional eating. What do I need to do? You know, what is it that I need to be looking at how can I care for myself? How can I nurture my body in another way when those kind of cravings come about? Like maybe you need to write in your journal. Maybe people need to take a bath. Maybe you need to look at, you know, this is a, a theme. This is a pattern through my life. Maybe I need to get some help, you know, um, because doing these sorts of things and being on this journey alone is not the way it's meant to be. You know, we're meant to have mentors. We're meant to be surrounded by community and family to kind of help us on this path. So, um, but that's, that's definitely a big part of it, Rob, though, uh, emotional eating. It's, it's, uh, it's a huge um, problem for many, many people. Yeah, Good. let's bring that one up. Um, so as we get back into that kind of the way that we feel, you know, wanting to feel good. So when we eat in the narrow time window, we'll also find that our energy improves um, because we know that when we're eating sugar all the time, so sugar will also, sugar raises insulin. So because your body has to produce insulin to lower the sugar, uh, insulin raises cortisol and cortisol is a stress hormone. And as most of us know that when cortisol goes up for short periods of time, that can be okay, right? And that's what some people will call stress, or that's a natural form of stress. Like if you almost, uh, if you go toward a hot stove and you pull your hand back quickly, or you got a little burn, that was a physical stress that you had to react really fast. But can you imagine if you were steadily throughout the day top, tapping that hot, hot stove, then your body's going to be numb to that, um, to, numb to that feeling. And also that's going to put a lot of physical pain on your body. You know, your hands are going to get burned. The calluses and everything are going to form because you've been under a chronic, chronic stress. So we can take little bits of stress and cortisol, but if we're eating that sugar all the time, that's the thing. Sugar is going to spike our cort cortisol and we're going to be in a chronically stressed state. So one of the things that I found again and again is when people give up going to sugar as their main source of food when they shorten their feeding window so that they go 16 hours or less without food, then they find that their stress levels actually come down. And there's been research that's been done on individuals with bipolar disorder and also with anxiety that follow a ketogenic meal plan, which is kind of the ultimate, right? Like it really lowers the amount of starch that you have. And those individuals get better from a stress standpoint when they're following those types of meal plans. So, 
Yeah. So it's, you know, when we look at so many of the things that are out there on the market these days and, you know, you go to your physician and I see so many people that go in and they just want to have, they're feeling tired, they're feeling stressed out, but, and the doctor might want to hand them, you know, Prozac or Celexa or clonazepams or Ativan, whatever it may be, because people want a quick fix to get them down. They want something to relieve that anxiety. But if we actually start to get to the root and we look at how we're feeding ourselves, how we're nourishing ourselves, what that time window is like, like many people find that they can't get to sleep at night, right? They can't sleep well because they've just eaten a meal before bedtime. So maybe they don't need a sleeping pill. They just need to cut out and narrow that window before bedtime to allow the body to release our natural hormones to allow us to relax at nighttime. Wow. That's awesome. Um, And then we have a few other things um, that were talked about. Again, we talked a little bit about energy, but brain function. Uh, We do know now that, you know, Alzheimer's is referred to as type three diabetes. And part of that is because of the impact that sugar has on our brain. And we do know that diabetics have a tenfold increase in the risk of Alzheimer's. So if we cut down, again, the starchiness in our foods, if we narrow that eating window, then for many individuals, that can go a much better way to improving our brain health as well. Well, I can always use that. (laughs) A little bit of brain health. So I can remember what's in the next room. Exactly. But we're all looking for better brain health. We're all looking for brain clarity. And then the last thing would be gut health. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, I run a gut health program, it's 21 days. And on the gut program, this is what we do. We get rid of a lot of these refined sugars. We eat in a narrow window because we want to improve our digestion. So many people have problems with irritable bowel syndrome, diverticulosis, Crohn's and colitis. You know, we see all of these conditions. But the bowel in just a few days, like even, you know, some listeners might have noticed that without all the sugar, without the gluten, maybe their bowels are starting to have a normal consistency now. Uh, Because even in five to seven days, you can start to see changes because the lining of the gut starts to regenerate itself, you know, um, and when our gut is working better, then also our body gets back in balance. Like many people don't realize that what is going on on the inside is a reflection of the outside. So, you know, if our mind is not feeling clear, that can be a reflection of our gut. If our skin is not clear, if we have rashes, if we have eczema, psoriasis, this can be a reflection of our gut. And getting our gut in good shape is one of the key things that we can do for good health. Um, I often tell people that I do a little uh, a test, like it's kind of, a, it's a, an annual report card. And one of the things that's on the report card, it says is, are you having one to two bowel movements a day that are in the shape of a snake? Because when you are, that shows that you are eliminating properly and that the texture and consistency of your bowels is, uh, is regular because that's what our bowel movements should be looking like. And when we get our bowels that are looking like snakes, then generally that means it's a sign that our digestion is good. And generally it's a sign that we're getting the rest of our body back in balance as well. Well, never really looked that close, but I guess, <laughs> I guess there's something to, to study. There's always something new to study. <laughs> wow. Well, again, it's that awareness of our body and things that mm-hmm. you don't think about, like And, you know, many physicians don't have time to ask about these sorts of things, but I, I feel it's a key component of our health. And, uh, you know, as part of this series, you know, we're starting with five days, but there's going to be lots of ongoing follow-up because I really wanted to give people a taste of, of how you can get healthy. And then, um, the next steps will be how we can kind of continue on this journey together and learning more health information because five days is just really scraping the surface, uh, the surface of kind of getting people along that uh, path toward health and wellness. That's true. Yeah. It's a good so, idea though, to get to know what's going on. It is for sure. So yeah, so that was narrowed feeding window. Eat less, live more. Good. Good. So far so, so good. Like you're it. doing well. Uh, and Rob, you didn't, one of the things I was going to ask about is, um, when, just cause we're on the topic, a little bit of food and you had mentioned before that you did have pre-diabetes and you kind of had said that you had lost a little bit of weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was your biggest takeaway over these couple of months when you started making 
these lifestyle changes? Like so far, what do you think has been the one biggest thing um, that's helped you with your weight loss to date? Well, I, I eat, I, I sort of fit into your uh, category of, uh, uh, I'm in a narrow window. I only eat once a day. So my body has lots of time to get rid of everything and take care of it. And the food I put into my body is, is a lot healthier than it ever was. And uh, I, that's probably why that's all I can say. And I, I feel I, I, one of the reasons was because I uh, found out that you, some of the pain you get is inflammatory by the food you eat. So I used to have a lot of back pain and a lot of pressure and stuff from eating food and things like that. And uh, so I've, I've been trying different things in my diet to try and eliminate inflammation and pain so that I can work through a lot of things <laughs> anyway. And, uh, and it seems to be working, but on the, the benefit of all of that, I didn't really start doing all this stuff to lose weight. I started doing it to feel better, to not uh, have pain and, and just get some breath back and be a little bit more energetic and be able to do my work and get stronger. And on, and on as a consequence, I started losing weight. I've actually lost a lot of weight, maybe too much weight, but I've, I think I've lost about 18 pounds now in the last couple of months. So it's, it's, it's quite a bit of weight I've lost by changing over to this, this system. Well, thanks for sharing, Rob. And that's kind of the key. So feeling better. So you were feeling, did things that made you feel better. And then the weight loss came as a consequence of that. Yeah. 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 I didn't start it out as, as a weight loss program. <laughs> that's for sure. And in terms of your, uh, the number 18, you know, again, you and I can talk offline about that. Uh, but, you know, of course, the amount of weight one loses depends on, you know, their pre-existing status, any health conditions that people have, which is why for those that really, if they have a lot of medical problems, they should have some supervision as they're going through, you know, a major life set and major changes. And many individuals do need to have blood work just to make sure that they are getting, you know, essential vitamins and minerals and um, during these times where they're, they're starting to drop a few pounds. So mm -hmm. it's true. Well, this is great, Rob. And thank you again for being such a good sport. I know that people are learning for, from your message uh, that it is good uh, for you to share and to see that we're all in this uh, same boat together. So yeah. there's no, no special, uh, <laughs> nothing special going on here. <laughs> I struggle like everybody else. And, uh, and me too, you know, this is why this has been so important to me is, you know, I went through my own health consequences of migraine headaches, chronic pain, uh, burnout, skin conditions. And uh, then this is the message that I can and share with all of you as well. So thanks everybody for tuning in for Wednesday. We've got two more days to go. Uh, I'll have some more posts about Qigong and uh, healthy organic foods uh, on the Facebook page. And we will see you all again tomorrow. Have a great day. Thanks Bye. again, Doc. Good stuff.